What's going on everybody? Welcome to another video and today we are talking about Rack Retrieval Augmented Generation with a Neo4j Knowledge Graph. Now at first I will give you a short introduction what Rack is and how it works before I show you in a quick code example how we can set it up on our laptops using the Gen AI Docker stack. Now let's get started. It's going to be interesting. Let's kick this one off by understanding what RAG actually is. Now, LLMs are trained on publicly available data and therefore can answer common sense questions. For example, list three ideas for a New Year's party theme. Now, the AI would reply, sure, here are three ideas. However, let's assume you have a large Neo4j knowledge graph containing information and relationships which you don't want to publish on the internet and therefore the LLM cannot be trained on this data. For example, we have a Neo4j knowledge graph here and it contains documents, for example, the deployment model of our organization and how to retrieve your security credentials. The LLM has no access to this data and can therefore not answer related questions. So if the user asks, who do I need to contact to get my database password, the LLM would basically reply, nothing meaningful. Somehow we have to transfer the knowledge stored in the knowledge graph to the LLM to enable it to answer questions. So, and that's where RAG, so the retrieval augmented generation comes into play. Let's say we have a Neo4j knowledge graph containing unstructured data, for example, text and relationships between the documents, as we've seen before. We could use tools like LangChain to build powerful Gen AI transformation chains. For example, retrieve the text representation of nodes, embed the text documents using an embedding model and retrieve vectors for the documents and finally store the embeddings as node properties in our graph. Finally, we can create a vector index to allow for similarity vector search in our graph database. Now we have vector representations of our nodes in the Neo4j vector store. So the vector index enables us to perform a similarity search on vectors efficiently. So for example, if we had a query vector, and we performed a similarity search with the vector store, the vector store would return three or five or K similar vectors by comparing these vectors from the vector store. Now, the question is how does this help us with our problem? Now, having the vector index with the embedding vectors in our Neo4j graph, we can build another length chain to provide context to the questions we ask to the LLM. So if the user asked, who do I need to contact to get my database password? We could embed this question using the same embedding model as we used to embed our nodes and therefore retrieve a vector which represents the question in this embedding space. We could use this embedding vector of our question to query the vector index which would give us back, for example, three similar nodes in our graph together with a similarity score. Now we could use these three nodes that have been returned by the vector search to query the knowledge graph itself on its structure, so the relationships in a plain cipher query to retrieve even more context from our knowledge graph. Now this would yield a couple of documents which are kind of related to the question the user asked. Now we can augment the initially asked question by the user with the information retrieved from the knowledge graph and then send this augmented question to our large language model to actually get an answer which is based on the context we have provided and therefore on the internal documents. So for example, the LLM could answer ask Laura from the infrastructure team. And that's how the RAG, the retrieval augmented generation works. Now I would like to give you a short demonstration how you can set this up on your local laptop by using a repository called the Gen AI stack. 
Now this um, repository gives us a quite complex stack for such Gen AI purposes and it orchestrates multiple technologies. So it uses an LLM provider. In my case, I will use um, Olama. And for Docker, uh, for Mac, I have to install Olama locally on my machine because Docker for Mac lacks support for the GPU usage and therefore it has some limitations on the performance. So it's documented here in the repository of the Gen AI stack. Aside from that, the Gen AI stack starts a Neo4j database and has implemented some applications, for example, a data loader, which can load data from GitHub. So it can export questions from GitHub and load these questions into a Neo4j model. It also provides us with a chat front end where we have a simple toggle, whether we wanted to use RAG or not. And therefore in the background, it orchestrates various types of lang chains, which we are going to see in the code later on. Now to get this running, I have installed Olama on my Mac. Um, and if you would like to do so as well, I can recommend you to go to the Olama website, which makes it quite easy to install Olama. Now if I go to the terminal, I can simply type Olama serve and it will start a local server, which we can connect to, to interact with the LLM. Secondly, I have cloned the Gen AI stack repository. And the first thing we have to do in here is to take the env.example file and create a .env file in the project's root directory. And the naming for this file is quite important because the name of the file is hard coded in the Python applications. Now within the .env file, we can set a couple of configurations for the Gen AI stack. The first one would be which LLM to use. In our case, we use Llama 2, which I have installed in my Olama installation as well. Secondly, we can specify the embedding model, which will be used to embed our questions and the data in our knowledge graph into a vector form. Finally, we can specify Neo4j options, which I left for the defaults. And this one is quite important as well, the Olama base URL. That's how we can reach the Olama service. And as we saw on the command line, the Olama started a connection or opened up a port, which is 11434. And this should be matching with this Olama base URL. Now on a Mac, we are using host.docker.internal to back reference to the local host on the Docker host. So as we are not running Olama in a Docker container, we have to reference our local host using this special host name. And that's it for the configuration part. After having done that, we can actually start the Docker Compose. And I would like to show you the Docker Compose file quickly as well. So here all the services are specified and we can see the LLM will only be started if we pass in an option called Linux. So the LLM container will only be started if you pass in this profile. I won't do that because I have Olama running locally. Secondly, it will also start a Neo4j database. I don't want the volumes to be mounted um, on my machine. Therefore, I commented this out. So the data will be lost once I remove the container. And then there's the loader and the API and so on. Finally, as I head back to my command line, in the project directory, I can say docker compose up and it will start all of these services in the docker compose file. Now I, now I have pulled all of the images here already because that's why it's a lot faster here. But for the first time when you run this on your machine, it can take quite a while to pull all of these images here. Now we can see that it's pulling the image or uh, the model already from Olama. And we can also see that something has happened on Olama side already. And then it will try to start the Neo4j database, which has been started now. And now it's starting the services for the bot, which is the chat front end, and also the loader, which we're going to use to load data from Stack Overflow into Neo4j. Now let's head over to the loader, which we can find at localhost and then port 8502. And using this loader front end, 
Um, this has been implemented by the Gen AI stack, so that's nothing I have done. I'm just showing how to use it. We can you, we can import questions from Stack Overflow into our Neo4j graph, and here we can select a question tag and how many questions we would like to import. Let's use 200 for now, and yeah, we can also select the uh, selection criteria down here. But I would just start the import. Now in the repository, we can see what's happening in the loader and it's basically accessing Stack Overflow um, to retrieve data and then it will use uh, Cypher queries to generate a graph structure, which it will show upon completion of the loading process. Now here we can see that we are creating question nodes and answer nodes and the uh, links between them and user nodes. So that's what has been implemented for us already. Another thing to notice about the loader functionality is that it already embeds our text and creates embeddings with embedding properties on the nodes and finally creates a vector index in Neo4j. All of that is implemented in this loader.python module. Now the loading has completed and it also shows us the schema it has generated in Neo4j for us. So if we head over to the Neo4j browser, which you can find as regular on 7474 port, and now we can have a look at the data. We can see what has been created for us. For example, there's a question with the ID 19 and it's saying trying to build nested query in Cypher SQL um, to find gross sales and so on. And it also links to the answer which says you can simplify the query by using the new count subquery and so on. And we would like to use this knowledge graph in our retrieval augmented generation. Now to access the bot interface, we can head over to localhost and then 8501, where they have implemented a front end where I can type a link, uh, where I can type a question, which then can be sent to the LLM augmented or not augmented. So I will use um, disabled. So we're not using any augmentation for um, this question here. And I can ask, can I use sub queries in Neo4j? And we'll see what's happening. So what's happening in the bot.python is that it instantiates two lang chains one for the LLM only and one for rack augmented. And depending on the flag we set in the front end, it will use the one or the other. And these chains are actually specified in chains in chains.python. And here we can see what's actually happening. Now in the LLM only chain, we will basically load the LLM we have specified in our configuration and then send the user prompt to the LLM without any pre-processing and return the answer provided by the LLM. In the RAG augmented language chain, we will basically provide more context to the question. And we will do this by using the Neo4j vector um, with an existing index, which th that's a package coming from the lang chain, where we can specify the connection details for our Neo4j database. We can specify an index name, which is supposed to use and we will specify an embedding model to embed our question. And then we, we can specify which, of, which property of the nodes should be returned together with a Cypher query, which we will use once we have performed the vector search. So we would use the embedding vector to perform a vector search in the vector store of Neo4j. And then we will see the results from the vector search as parameters to our Cypher query um, with node and score. So we get a tuples from the node and the score, and we would try to find these um, nodes in the graph and try to find some answers, some context to the nodes we have retrieved before we then return the context, which we will give as plain text. So down here in the return statement of the Cypher query, we're basically composing the text from the context that we have found. And that will be returned 
and the question will be augmented with all of that information and then sent to the LLM to be answered. Now, once we head back to the chat interface here, the LLM has created an answer for us. Now I would like to ask the very same question with reg enabled this time. Now we can see in our chat front end that it has generated a different answer and the answer is much more precise as it has been before. That's due to the fact that we have much more context available for answering this question by the LLM. So this has been only a short demonstration about how to use the GenAI stack. I think the repository is very, very helpful. And thanks to all the contributors to um, develop this for us, we can definitely play around with this and create different use cases similar to this. Um, if you would like to see more content like this, please leave a like or a comment and see you next time in the next video. Bye bye.